In this poster, Edinburgh Instruments will present a full photophysical characterization of a TADF material using the FS5 spectrofluorometer. TADF stands for Thermally Activated Delay Fluorescence, and it is a photoluminescence mechanism of interest for the development of organic light emitting diodes. In this poster presentation, we will show a characterization of CZDBA, a TADF emitter with the chemical structure shown here. This diagram shows the different mechanisms by which an organic light emitting diode, or OLED, can emit light. The first step is the recombination of electron hole pairs to generate an excited state that subsequently emits light on relaxation to the ground state. A first-generation OLED is based on the emission of fluorescence from a singlet excited state. Using fluorescent materials, as opposed to phosphorescent materials, has some advantages such as the absence of heavy metals and the availability of blue emitters. However, the internal quantum efficiency of the OLED is limited to a maximum of 25% photons because only one quarter of recombination events produce a singlet excited state. A second generation OLED enables a maximum IQE of 100% as it emits from a triplet state. The population in the singlet excited state can move on to the triplet by intersystem crossing and then emit phosphorescence. The drawbacks of these materials is that they include heavy metals and they cannot produce a stable blue OLED. TADF materials have enabled a third generation of OLEDs. In these materials, there is a small energy gap between the singlet and the triplet that can be bridged by increasing the temperature. This opens up a reverse intersystem crossing mechanism by which the triplet population moves up to the singlet state and then emits fluorescence. Therefore, a 100% IQE is achievable without the use of rare heavy metals and a stable blue pixel is possible. In this study, we employed an Edinburgh Instruments FS5 spectrofluorometer to fully characterize the photophysics of CZDBA. The FS5 was equipped with a xenon lamp, photon counting detector for emission, silicon detector for absorption, and a pulse diode laser and lifetime electronics for time resolved photoluminescence measurements. The first step was characterizing the absorption and emission spectra of the material in the gas toluene. Absorption was measured with a transmission detector included as standard in the FS5. The photoluminescence spectrum, shown in red, was acquired with a PMT detector. CZDBA shows a broad spectrum peaking at 550 nanometers so it, it would be used as a material for green pixels in OLED displays. Next, the time resolved photoluminescence of CZDBA was studied using the pulse diode laser and MCS electronics in the FS5. Multi-channel scaling, or MCS, allows characterizing the excited state lifetime in the range of microseconds. The MCS decay was fitted in the Floracol software. The fit is markedly bimodal, with a prompt fluorescence component of 78 nanoseconds lifetime and a delayed fluorescence component with, with almost 1500 nanoseconds. To obtain the spectra of the prompt and delayed components, a time-resolved emission spectroscopy scan was acquired in the software. This measurement obtains the MCS decay at different wavelengths and displays them as a 2D color map. It is possible to take a slice of the data to obtain the spectrum at a particular time. The next figure will show the emission spectra at 100 nanoseconds, corresponding mainly to the prompt component, and at 4 microseconds, corresponding to the delayed component. As seen in the figure, the prompt and delayed components are identical. This indicates that the delayed emission arises from the single state and therefore corresponds to TADF, as opposed to phosphorescence. 
The next step was a photoluminescence quantum yield measurement to characterize the efficiency of the TADF material. The test was carried out in the SC30 integrating sphere accessory using a solution of CZDBA with and without the gassing. The observed quantum yield decreases by half in the presence of oxygen, from 25% to 13%. Since the triplet state is quenched by oxygen, this is further evidence that TADF emission is taking place. Finally, fluorescence and phosphorescence lifetimes were studied with a liquid nitrogen cryostat accessory in the FS5. The sample was cooled down to 77 Kelvin using the cryostat and its photoluminescence decay was obtained. When using a laser for excitation, the delayed component is strongly suppressed at 77 Kelvin. This indicates that it's TADF suppressed at low temperatures as reverse intersystem crossing is inhibited. If a microsecond flash lamp is used for excitation, a decay in the millisecond range is recorded at 77 Kelvin. This longer decay is phosphorescence emission from the long-lived triplet state, which is suppressed at high temperature as reverse intersystem crossing becomes enabled. In conclusion, the FS5 spectrofluorometer includes all the tools for a complete photophysical characterization of thermally activated delayed fluorescence. If you would like more information on this poster presentation, please refer to the application note in the Edinburgh Instruments website. You can also get in touch with our sales team, who will be happy to help with your questions on spectroscopy instrumentation.